Hello everyone and welcome to the first week of 2021. I hope you rested well. I hope you have had a wonderful festive period. I certainly did. So, and we shouldn't be forgetting that we, we have got all these Saturn and Jupiter conjunction going on in certain houses of your chart, which is all about new commitments and new opportunities. So one of my uh, commitments uh, for 2021 is to guide you through of the planetary alignments each week. Rather than doing monthly videos, I think I'm gonna break them down to like a 30, 40 minutes maximum um, weekly videos so that you can prepare your year with astrology. This is the era of astrology anyway, so I, I feel like I need to give you as much guidance as possible. So I hope you are ready to embrace the best version of yourself starting from today. And January is a big month for us. For more reasons, uh, Mars is changing sign after six months of having been in the sign of Aries. The Mercury and Venus will be changing sign as well. So this is quite an exciting month, but we are going to be focusing on the very first week till the 8th of January. So the year is basically starting for us um, with a Mercury conjunct Pluto on 23 degree of Capricorn. And that's going to start on the 4th of January. And most probably you will be feeling this transit for approximately about three days before and three days after as well. Now, this is an extremely good period of time for you to dig as deep as possible. Mercury is uh, how you, the ways you process your thinking, uh, the way you process information. And uh, Pluto is all about revealing something. Uh, kind of the, the truth. So this period of time, you can have extremely intense thoughts. You can become very detail orientated. So actually this is a great time for you to, to do some planning of what you expect from 2022, uh, 2021. Mercury and Pluto con uh, conjunction is very much about like a scheduling time. So I recommend around the 4th of January to sit down and plan the entire year out what you want to achieve. Capricorn is all about achievement, right? And um, most probably you might have got a very strong desire to uh, figure things out. So some of you um, probably want to have a very deep conversation with someone. It can be a boss of yours, Capricorn, or it can be a parental figure but also it could be someone you are settled with. So a business partner or even relationship. So um, Pluto and Mercury together act like a truth serum. So people want to talk about deep stuff. People want to reveal something about themselves, talking about taboos, or even may, doing some type of researches about subjects you you haven't had the wildest dreams of. So you might want to reveal something about yourself which you have kept as a secret for a long time. Uh, you might get to know a very, very important information about someone or so, which can be at the moment intense and shocking, but um, it is necessary to, to face these information and, and do something about it. Mercury is, is a planet which likes asking questions and with Pluto, which is intensified. So this is a time when you should be asking those big questions. Who do I want to be? What are my long-term goals? Where am I heading in life? What is my life mission? And um, also <clears throat> because Mercury is something to do with negotiation and consultations, it is actually a great period of time to consult with someone about these topics. Capricorn can carry the energy of fear. So it might be a great time to face your inner insecurities and start talking uh, about them to someone. 
if you need some professional help, um, I'm more than happy to help you. The link to make a contact with me is going to be in the description box anyway. And very importantly, you're gonna have to ask the right questions, uh, asking the right questions because then you get the right answer from the universe. Somehow it is going to be revealed some of those secrets, universal secrets to, uh, to you. Um, <clears throat> Mercury and Pluto together very much talks about a deep knowledge. So if you want to pursue some studies or you want to um, uh, do some researches, actually research, actually this is a brilliant time for you. Um, you need to be careful at the same time because this um, elevated intellectual level can bring you some type of misunderstandings as well. The way how you communicate can actually get to the level where people might get annoyed uh, very easily. Remember that Pluto, which is all about penetration, Mercury is curiosity. So you might be asking questions which people don't really know how to, how to deal with. Uh, and um, we're talking about powerful words here. Remember that you only need to give advice to people who are seeking for it, because not everyone is ready and this, around, this time around, you might be very like amplified to share your opinions and maybe you do that in a way which is gonna be hurting others. You also have got great persuasion skills um, this week, especially if you want to be um, changing or modifying some type of contracts or or, uh, or you wanna be showing the negative and the positive side of th something, then you've got, uh, this is a great period of time. Also, it's very good to do some uh, occult studies. It's very good to do some, for instance, brainstorming or brain control, or even doing something with law of attraction because Pluto has got this magnetic force around it and uh, Mercury is your thoughts. So you do need to know that your thoughts have got an extreme power this week. What you fish, wish for can be manifested as well. Um, also, Pluto is all about getting to the heart of a matter, getting to the bottom of any problems. It's an investigative planet. So this week, uh, you might be able to get to know something why it has happened the way it happened and so forth. Mercury is a very self-analytical. So um, it is all about looking into the mirror and then seeing a different side of you, seeing yourself through, not just seeing the bones and the skins, but seeing what is going on behind the subconscious. Be also mindful about possible power struggles um, as I said, you can easily hurt others with your words and you can be a little bit empty, a little bit nervous as well, because remember that uh, we're talking about an amplified mind and um, some of your deepest uh, desires might be coming onto the surface, which you don't want to be talking, talking about or you don't want to be really thinking about, but it might be coming back in the version of dreams or, or you keep reading about it and so on. Now, one of the major um, configurations or, or planetary aspects of the month is Mars entering the sign of Taurus, which is gonna be taking place of, uh, on 6th of January. And uh, this is an exciting period because Mars spent six months in Aries. And I think even though Aries is ruled by Mars and it's a very energetic Mars, but I think um, after a while too much is just um, too much of kind of goodness is, is, is just becomes uh, unbearable. So in a sense, of course, because Mars was very strong, it was a very volatile, very aggressive type of energy. And all these things start slowing down. Um, now, Mars 
because it's just finished its retrograde period. It hasn't reached its normal speed yet. So he is going to be spending eight weeks instead of six um, in the sign of Taurus. Um, and one of the frustrating parts of him being here is that um, it is something called the detriment position for him. So detriment is uh, the opposite sign a planet rules. So Mars rules the sign of Scorpio and the opposite is Taurus. And that is said to be one of the weakest position for a planet. And it's like a slow burner. Um, it is very, I mean, Taurus is a fixed sign which has got great endurance. And the good thing about this is that Mars never gives up. Mars is actually able to give up only things uh, to be able to achieve balance in life. It's actually a great period of time to do some DIY around your home, uh, but because of the fighting nature of Mars, and uh, Taurus is very much about nature, financial, self-worth, even your principles. This could very much be a period of time when, when you're gonna learn new ways how to stand up for yourself, um, how to protect nature. Some of you most probably will reconnect with their surroundings, with nature, and that's why they're gonna do some type of gardening at home and so forth. Mars is also the planet of motivation, and uh, Taurus is the tangible result, something which you can hold in your own hand. So it's actually good to uh, build something at home or, or even just be as hardworking as possible. But because of Mars nature in the sign of Taurus, as I said, it's quite weak. It might not necessarily be the greatest time to start new projects because um, Taurus tends to be quite cautious maybe you're gonna have to focus on things what you already have. Remember, this is all about patience. Um, Taurus is all about steadily, surely but slow, slowly but surely. Um, you need to know that with Mars in Taurus, nothing is handed over on a silver plate. You need to learn first about patience. So as I said, Mars in Taurus can be quite cautious, and Taurus is something to do with your food intake, something which you put in your mouth. Taurus rules anything to do with the neck area. So um, some of you might decide, okay, it's uh, Christmas period ended, it's time to hit the gym. Now, first of all, don't expect miracle from day one. You need to show consistency. Um, you need to probably cut Mars back some of the starchy and sugary things. Uh, and that could very much help you to, uh, to kind of lose weight if that's the um, end game. Um, yes, now it's not all doom though, even though Mars in um, Taurus is in a detriment position. The key for this alignment is to have a solid foundation before we move on to thrive and pursue a new project. If you feel that you've got a solid foundation, then yes, go for it. If not, then return and then have a look at, you know, how I can make that even more solid. Um, very much uh, Mars in Taurus talks about aligning our needs with our values. So you're gonna have to ask yourself the question, what do I desire? What do I value the most? Do I really need this? Do I really need that? And as I said, the good thing is that Mars in Taurus has got plenty of endurance and strength, but uh, you only need to be focusing on a, on a couple of, maximum on a couple of activities. Because remember Mars is all about um, running towards the end of the light and not necessarily looking at the obstacles. Now, Taurus is a financial sign, something to do with your own money. And therefore, uh, you do need to be careful about um, on what you spend money on. 
Remember, Taurus is all about security. It's a security seeking sign. Uh, and Mars can kind of bring you some type of action on how to make money or a little bit of a worry about your financial situation. You might be asking yourself the question, what was the point of working hard when I can't really do anything? I can't really enjoy what I have really worked hard for. The enjoyment, the pleasure comes from Taurus. Uh, Mars in Taurus is, is more like an anger, uh, a passive aggressive type of anger. Uh, it's more about controlling through silence. So some of you might build up some type of frustration which wants to be let out. And you do need to think about how I can do that because um, anger building up within us is just coming. Somehow it needs to es escape the body. And uh, the more we do that, the, the, um, basically the body is more affected by it. So if you are frustrated about something, take a step back and think about how I can let that out and maybe go and then get a punching bag and then smack it around. Or as I said, go to the gym and do so. Uh, Mars is still an energy which can hurt others easily. And it is in a Venusian sign. So you're gonna, be have, you're gonna have to be careful about your relationships as well. Um, now, Mars uh, is going to be making a square to Saturn, which is all about frustration and inhibition. You might have got a very strong desire to go stronger, but unfortunately you might be facing some type of issues or problems or, or you keep receiving no's. Uh, receiving no's from authority figures or teachers or <clears throat> or business partners, uh, you come up with an idea of how to make money, or you might want to have a loan and then you get thrown back and so forth. So something to do with superiors, even father figures, um, you might have um, some type of, some type of uh, frictions or tensions going on there. Someone might want to talk you down on or, or somehow wanting to give you a harsh reality, um, somehow to block you or limit you in your, um, in your comfort zone, really. Someone might want to get you out of your comfort zone, and therefore you tend to be building up a defensive mode. Uh, be careful, as I said, because you can actually be harsh to your loved ones as well. <clears throat> I think it is not the greatest month to start any new project. I think it's more advisable to concentrate on things what you have. Um, <clears throat> but um, from March onwards, beginning of March, it's going to be a lot better to come up with new ideas and then, and then maybe start manifesting those. At the moment, think about it, come up with some ideas and and then um, keep them noted down. Um, so another reason why uh, January is quite a big month for us is because Aquarius is changing sign also, and three of the personal planets uh, do the same. So Mercury will enter the sign of Aquarius, and um, he will spend two and a half month here because uh, the end of the year is gonna start with the Mercury retrograde. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> Mercury feels quite well in the sign of uh, Aquarius because both of them are extremely logical, uh, very rational, and uh, Aquarius is the sign of higher intellect, somehow reconnecting with some divine power, downloading some type of information from, from an unknown um, and of course, you know, it's like the internet. You don't really know where the information comes from. You just do your little researches. So Mercury in Aquarius is a very good time to explore your ideas as well as your ideas. Um, um, Mercury is all about communication. Aquarius is group and group spirit. So it acts like a spokesman. 
Some of you might be standing out somehow in a crowd and holding a speech. Be careful about your um, nerve system, of course, because um, a public speech can make everyone nervous, right? So Mercury in Aquarius is very much about discussions uh, in a larger group of people. So because there is going to be a Mars square as well, uh, try to refrain yourself from any type of social media arguments. Because at the beginning, I've also mentioned how powerful those words can be this month. Um, Mercury in Aquarius is an energy which is all beyond you. So something which you can't necessarily influence, but somehow it is directed onto you as well. Um, I recommend looking at where your Aquarius house cusp is, because you can be a lot more curious about that particular area of life. And maybe that's where you want to gain more knowledge. That might be the area of life you, you want to be asking these big questions, or you just simply want to learn about that. So for instance, maybe you've got um, Aquarius on the eighth house cusp, and you decide to learn more about occult studies, or maybe you've got Aquarius um, on the sixth house cusp, and you want to learn more about a healthy lifestyle and so forth. On a worldly scale, I believe January is going to be a little bit risky, um, especially for social gatherings. Now, Aquarius rules anything to do with fans, sports fans. So I'm expecting because of the retrograde period in the first three months to have some cancellation due to COVID-19 issues or some technical issues as well. Aquarius rules a couple of um, uh, political parties also. So I'm expecting some of the political parties to kick in a little bit of a fight and and kind of engage in, in, um, in, a, in an inappropriate manner, I would say. Um, yes, so that's pretty much about Mercury in Aquarius. And then we've got Venus shifting into the sign of Capricorn. Now, it's interesting for more reasons. That's going to be the very first Venusian energy of the year when it's going to be a sign change happening. But Venus is going to go retrograde uh, in uh, 2021 towards the end of the year in the sign of Capricorn as well. So I recommend really much focusing on Venus in uh, Capricorn and, for instance, trying to solidify your relationship with others, um, trying to enjoy the work you do. Um, Venus has got quite loads to offer here because in a day chart, Venus has got strength by triplicity, which is a 50% strength. Um, so definitely a lot more than a peregrine Venus like she was um, in the sign of Sagittarius. Peregrine basically means that it has no essential dignity whatsoever. Another good news about this Venus is that there is no, uh, uh, it, she is not witnessed by any of the malefic planets. We only have got Pluto, which is uh, the transformer and trying to bring some issues to the surface. So because Venus is all about comfort zone, love, financial matters, self-worth, insecurities. Uh, when it joins Pluto later on this uh, month, then it might want to reveal some of those secrets to you. It might be a divine secret of how to overcome some of those challenges. So watch out for the signs of the universe. Or actually, it might bring some problems onto the surface which you need to tackle. But overall, this Venusian four-week period, I think it's giving you um, an opportunity to stabilize a friendship or a relationship, most probably self-indulging, uh, but not necessarily in a grandiose way. So not necessarily in a, you know, um, that I'm going to have a massage, for instance, every single day, but just practicing some self-love with moderation. And of course, Capricorn has been marked 
a lot in the recent years by having Saturn, Jupiter, Euro I mean, Pluto there. So actually Venus can help to make some peace with the area of life wherever Capricorn is in your chart. So maybe it's your first house. Maybe you make, a, maybe you make peace with yourself. Or maybe it's the 10th house, you make peace with your boss or, you know, or you might be having a negotiation or a conversation with your boss, which actually calm you down a little bit. So this Venus is more of a positive energy for, um, for the first week of January, I mean, the first two weeks of January, rather than negative. <clears throat> Now, um, I think going back onto the relationship department, I think um, uh, because of the nature of Capricorn, which is an earth sign, you do need to be aware that uh, practical uh, pieces of the relationship are going to be on a, on a plate, meaning that maybe this is the time when you need to be spending more time together with your partner. Uh, you might be uh, actually somehow re uh, pr promising something to your partner, like re reevaluating the relationship. You might be asking the question: Do I feel safe with this person? Do we have the right co-foundation? And uh, in a sense, probably uh, if there is no core foundation within the structure of that partnership, then you might start thinking about, okay, how we can do that? What can we do to make it better? I think it's very much about getting serious about your financials, boosting your relationship, even with business partners uh, or colleagues, and something to do with your self-worth as well. You might be connecting with people who can actually help you to achieve a long-term goal. And it might not be happening in January. <clears throat> it might be happening towards the end of the year slash 2022 in the first three months. But you can start uh, making those connections with someone. So uh, Mercury and Venus are changing sign on 8th of January. And um, therefore, it is a very important day, probably one of the most important dates of uh, January 2021. And on top of the cake, there is also going to be a Mars Mercury square going on at the same time. So this is what I usually call as a sharp tongue aspect. You do need to be aware that you might be expressing your anger in a hurtful way. Uh, you might say something which hurts others and you are going to regret that or that's not the way how you meant it, but uh, it can cause some type of misunderstandings. So if you need to talk uh, to someone about something important, just step back, cool down a little bit and try to avoid, avoid arguments because this could be quite an argumentative period. For those who have got more like passive signs in their chart, this Mars and Mercury square actually gives them the courage to speak up for themselves. Or those who are like typical people pleasers, actually it can give them the strength to say no to things. Some of you unfortunately will receive uh, negative or some yeah negative messages which might make you feel uncomfortable. So you're gonna have to look at where Taurus and Aquarius are in your chart, and then you should be expecting some negative news within that department. I also believe that um, the news will be full of violent events. Mercury is the news and Mars is the violent events. So uh, you might be reading a lot more about uh, committing suicide and, and all those type of energies. Um, and that's also very much the case with the Pluto Venus energy as well. So that's a little bit of um, um, an intensified uh, month for, for uh, some of us. Yes, um, I think we pretty much covered most of the aspects. 
Um, oh yeah, that is going to be looking at my uh, charts. I can see a sun sextile Neptune, which is also um, confirming the Mercury Mars square to a certain extent, because Neptune is like coloring. Uh, Neptune is mystical. Neptune is the rose-colored glasses. I have no clue type of energy. And sun is something to do with your life mission. And uh, you might have got um, like a tingling feeling what I want to do, what I would like to become or what my plans are. I just don't really know how to uh, give voice to it. So Neptune can confuse your progression or can confuse your belief in your life mission. I recommend just taking a step back and wanting to uh, uh, maybe meditate or focus on, focus on the real core of uh, issues and opportunities before you make um, any decision because that Mars and Mercury square also gives you a relentless way of thinking and it can really speed up your mind as well especially when Uranus will be um, also in the picture but I'm going to be speaking about that uh, uh, next week uh, yeah next week when Uranus is a lot more prominent in our charts yes so this is pretty much the energies of uh, the first week of uh, January I hope you enjoyed it and um, I will see you next week with, with another energy description so that you can prepare each week. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a wonderful week. Bye-bye.